Good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my new video. My name is AJ, I'm here to take you through all of the latest videos and news for today. I'm also going to be talking about in the second half of the video is a major breakthrough in the Chinese chip manufacturing and one of their biggest uh, chip manufacturers, SMIC, has basically created and is selling 7 nanometer chips which is a huge huge breakthrough. So I'm going to be talking about that in the second half of the video. and. So let's start with the first half of the video. Uh, I'm going to start with Ukraine grain deal and why, why it matters. So basically they've uh, agreed to a, a deal between Kiev and Moscow with the help of Turkey and the UN to basically deliver grains around the world. And Ukraine has finally agreed to remove mines blocking the grain. So before, as you know, Ukraine had been blaming Russia for all of this uh, grain shortages, but uh, Ukraine had not or did not want to remove all of the mines that was blocking the ships. So now they've agreed to do that. And as you can see also, it's going to go via Turkey. Uh, so this was one of the main reasons uh, Putin and Turkey met uh, over like a few days ago. They met with Iran and they signed huge deals together. And this was probably discussed uh, at that point as well. Funnily enough, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to come to an idiot of the day straight away. Normally I wait for the end of the video, but there is another one coming up end of the video. But I'm going to come up with this one. Um, so basically, the Western papers are reporting that Vladimir Putin kept Erdogan, I mean, sorry, Erdogan, Erdogan kept Vladimir Putin waiting for a minute. And I'm thinking, what the hell is going on here? I mean, um, why are they reporting such crappy news articles? I mean, waiting for a minute is nothing. I mean, what's wrong with that? I just don't understand what the big deal is it, to keep someone waiting for a minute. I mean, compare this to Biden when he went to Saudi Arabia. You know, when he landed in Saudi Arabia, the prince did not greet Biden. So how long did he keep him waiting? Probably for hours and hours and he didn't turn up. You know, but the Western papers are not going to report that, are they? You know, the prince, you know, MBS, he normally goes to the airport and greets people he likes. He greeted Trump when he arrived. He greets other leaders when they arrive in the airport. But why, why didn't he greet Biden? So they don't report anything like that. But just because he kept um, Putin waiting for a minute, that's all they have to go on. It's absolutely ridiculous. You see how the Western papers think. It's just, they're just clutching at straws, clutching at straws. So the next uh, story here, Ukraine should confiscate Russian gas, says the politician. So you, you know the pipeline that connects Russia with Western Europe, uh, there's one that goes through Ukraine. And one of the reasons that Ger you know Germany and as well as Russia agreed to build Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2 because Ukraine had been stealing or siphoning off a lot of the gas that was meant for Western Europe. So that's the main reasons between um, Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2. So they avoid all of this gas going via Ukraine because they, they keep stealing it. This pipeline is still going through Ukraine and they're probably still stealing it. And, and you can see how they're threatening um, Western Europe. Ukraine should confiscate Russian gas. I mean, if they confiscate it, imagine the misery and mayhem that would cause to Europe because they have shortage enough gas as it is. And it's going to increase the gas prices. It's going to cause mayhem. And this is why Russia does not like gas pipelines going through Ukraine. And I'm pretty sure one of these days when, the, when um, Russia has finished building up all of these pipelines to the east, to China, to India, to Iran, Central Asia, uh, other parts of Asia as well. Russia is going to just cut off this line because it's just too much headache for them. It's just too much bother. And you see Ukraine is bloody threatening to confiscate Russian gas. I mean, how do they get away with saying things like this? The Europeans are just sitting there taking all of these um, threats from Ukraine while they're sitting there in their chairs, comfy chairs, and still blaming Putin for it. It's absolutely crazy. It's crazy how they get away with it. <clears throat> So the U.S. is uh, seeing a lot of jobless uh, claims. Uh, the economy is really, really looking bad. 
um, not just US but the rest of the world, UK even, you see the inflation's uh, shooting up still. Um, businesses are la laying people off because they can't afford all of these increases in prices because all the raw materials have increased, um, the cost of goods have increased, the cost of transport has increased. So companies do not have the budget to keep staff anymore. So they are letting a lot of people go. Same same is happening to Europe, same is happening to the UK, and same is happening to the US as well. And costs are rising every single day. It's just getting worse and worse. Um, obviously, your bills are rising, your petrol costs are rising, gas prices are rising, uh, mortgage rates are rising, you're paying more tax as well. It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, right now people are enjoying the summer but once winter comes um, I can probably see a lot of mayhem happening on the streets, people rioting. Um, things can get really really bad so um, it's important to kind of keep this in mind. And also, interestingly, I read an article the other day, and I also read um, a couple of other YouTube channels, and it kind of scared me because, you know, it's basically banks, Western banks, I did not know this, have the power to confiscate your money um, in the event of a huge financial crisis. So I didn't know about this, and again, it shows that your money is not safe in Western banks. I mean, yeah, we've had a crisis in 2008, but that was nothing compared to what's coming now. For a real major, major crisis, and if the banks run out of money, basically it's written in, um, in, in the banks, um, in the, in, in, there's a couple of leaked papers which have got released, certain, certain banks in UK and probably in US as well, that they are within their rights to take the money from the people savings accounts and things like that just to keep the bank afloat and this happened during Cyprus and Greece at the time as well not many people um, actually report on that um, but you know if if you are living in the West if you're living in UK if you are living in the US I really suggest you guys look at your savings uh, see where you have saved your money and think about ways to get it out or just spend it on something like an asset for example property um, just something that the bank cannot just take take your money away because every day it seems like the west is becoming more and more dracon draconian um, the, the people have less and less freedom in the west and these governments are getting away doing more and more stuff to, to their citizens uh, people have less freedoms and now it may come to the point where they're just, just taking people's money away. So I hope it doesn't come to that. But from what I read, it looks like they are, they might do. And they are within their rights to do so as well. So just be careful, guys. Just be careful with your money. So I want to also talk about, um, otherwise this is, you know, here's one of my favorite comedians, Dave Chappelle. And... He's normally on Netflix and he normally makes a lot of LGBTQ jokes as well. He's, these um, gays and trannies have been trying to cancel this guy for years and they have not been able to do so. But it looks like they have fi finally done it. And it's just, you know, there's no such thing as free speech anymore. You know, uh, back in the day when comedians were basically saying whatever they want and feel uh, you know it's basically a joke sometimes you've got to take it as a joke if you don't find it funny that you don't have to listen to the person you know you can you know but you know it's all about freedom of speech you know uh, i just think that comedians are not funny anymore because it, all these comedians nowadays they're really really careful of what they say who they might upset uh, they're scared of being cancelled and in return they're just not funny anymore and you can see from um all of these Hollywood movies coming out with really crappy jokes. I mean, these jokes are not even funny. I mean, I saw Thor the other day and they made it into a parody. It's not even funny, that film. And, you know, they were really, really pushing hard to be funny, but they weren't. Nobody in the cinema laughed at one single joke in there. And I think jokes are just, um, comedians are just going out of fashion. Uh, they're just dropping like flies. They're really scared of, you know, upsetting certain 
types of people, LGTB or gay people. Um, you know, end of the day, it's just a joke. You know, it's just a joke. So, you know, I just don't understand this con cancel culture at the moment. You know, it's just it's just going a bit too far. So I'm going to come to the main part of the story now. So SMIC have um, basically started selling seven nanometer chips um, to Bitcoin companies, Bitcoin mining companies. And the US is absolutely freaking out because they thought that SMIC, like a couple of years ago, when they placed all of these sanctions on SMIC, they placed sanctions on all these Chinese companies. They placed so many sanctions on on China. China wasn't allowed to buy any high-end EUV lithography machines from ASML. They're banned from by any Chinese companies banned from buying them. And nobody's allowed to sell that to them. They can only sell DUV, which is um, which is the next generation down. And you know, SMIC have recently done a had a had a huge breakthrough and started making seven nanometer chips. The US thought that they cannot go beyond 28 nanometers because the DUV machines basically create 28 nanometers and SMIC were testing on 14 nanometers as well. But to the US's shock, they've now gone down to seven nanometers. And just to give you some context, um, the iPhones, uh, iPhone 12, um, that uses five nanometers. So currently the most advanced chips on the market are five nanometers. So the Chinese are not that far behind. To go five nanometers and beyond, um, China does need EUV lithography machines. So seven nanometers seems to be the the lowest that they can go with the current technology. So what the US is trying to do now, um, as you can see here, China's SMIC shipping seven nanometer chips reportedly copied TSMC's tech. And another article, so ASML um, says that there will be supply chain effects if DUV shipments to China are stopped. So what the US is now trying to do is they're trying to prevent the DUV machines going to China. So what they did before was stop any EUV technology going into China. But now they've real now the US has realized that China can make seven nanometers with DUV technology. Now they're trying to stop the these DUV shipments going into China. And ASML have said that if they follow up with this threat, there will be huge supply chain effects. And as you know, because of all of these chip sanctions that placed on China over the years, there had been a huge amount of chip shortages around the world. And a lot of companies, not just Chinese companies, but also a lot of Western companies had suffered because of it. And this is just going to make it worse. So you can see another article here. As China cracks Western monopoly on CPU chips, US is trying to restrict SMIC advancements. So. There really is not much they can do with SMIC, to be honest, because SMIC is sanctioned to hell. You know, they've placed so many sanctions on SMIC, but the SMIC is still creating seven nanometer chips. They are also creating 14 nanometer chips and they have huge factories creating 28 nanometer chips and 28 nanometer chips is what's required for electric cars and most appliances, IOT devices. So all they need is really, really good 28 nanometers ones and Obviously, SMIC can do 14 and now 7, and uh, and these will also help more advanced industries in, in China as well. And not only that, SMIC is building huge factories as well. I think there's one being built in Shenzhen and one being built in Shanghai as well. Um, they're pouring billions and billions into it, and uh, they're not going to be able to stop SMIC's advancement. Like I said, SMIC has been sanctioned to hell. I mean, what more can they do to SMIC? I just don't know what, what more they can do. So this article, which uh, I found quite funny, actually. So this basically Nancy Pelosi, which is who is a third person in line in the White House. If Biden, you know, steps down, if if his r lieutenant um, Kamala Harris steps down, Nancy Pelosi is a third in line. Um, so she is planning a visit to Taiwan in August and she was supposed to visit a few months ago and she said that she had COVID so she, she cancelled the trip so now she's uh, coming around saying that she's gonna visit um, Taiwan in August and 
you know, this is a huge, huge issue for China because um, because Nancy Pelosi is third in line. She's going to be the highest um, h highest person in the government to visit Taiwan, and China does not like this at all. And the fact that she's going uh, normally means that she had approval from the top, so Biden would have given approval for this for for this to happen. And China is, you know, I've, I've looked at some Chinese papers and, and China is mulling what to do about it. And they are thinking of taking so many actions. One of the actions is to basically um, get her restrained um, like, and stopped like they did, like Canada did, did to Wang, Wang Menjo. Um, so basically try and arrest her and keep her detained and there's also other stuff that China said that they, they would do but one thing is for sure they're not very happy because since this one China policy uh, was written up in the 1970s and agreed by President Nixon at the time and one of the reasons China at the time you know started shaking hands with President Nixon they made it very very clear that Taiwan was part of Chinese territory and there's only one China and that includes Taiwan which is part of China and President Nixon agreed to it and the reason he agreed to it because he needed China on board to be against the Soviets and you know so he has basically helped win the Cold War uh, because if China wasn't with on, on the American side and and against the Soviets at the time, um, America would not have probably won the Cold War. So that was a really really big move at the time. So what was really really important to China uh, was one thing, which was Taiwan. And you know it's very very important to them because Taiwan is the last remaining thing left for them uh, to as part of their 100 year or 150 year humiliation they've had from the west and from Japan um, as you know Japan you know occupied and took over Taiwan um, and the British occupied and took over Hong Kong so there's a lot of territory that China had lost over the years so they've got back Hong Kong obviously from the British they got back Macau so the final thing you know to end the 100 year humiliation uh, is to get the um, Taiwan island uh, reunified back with the mainland so that's so that's very very important to the Chinese people is very important to President Xi and it's the one thing that is there is Chinese red line there is no negotiation about it you know you can't mess around uh, anything about Taiwan so this is why uh, you know there's huge issues every time America you know messes around with Taiwan starts interfering with Chinese internal affairs because according to the Chinese you know they see this as an internal issue they want to reunify with Taiwan peacefully and they feel that America is coming in and basically messing around like like they have doing to Ukraine they're just getting involved um, they are pushing for separatists and they're just messing around um, with their own internal affairs and that's how the Chinese feel and you know I can understand why America is doing this because you know America is a it's not a rising power anymore China is a rising power and America is losing influence all over the world so they feel that if they lose Taiwan to China you know that's going to be a huge balance of power moving towards China because if they lose Taiwan to China they will start losing South Korea they will start losing um, Japan because South Korea and Japan will feel that America cannot you know uh, protect them anymore um, and you know it's a huge huge thing and also one of the things that America would lose is, is the first island chain so the first island chain is basically a chain of islands which surround China and if China, if China takes over Taiwan uh, this is the first break of the island chain and if Japan starts you know pushing out the American troops because of it and and South Korea does the same then you know slowly slowly but surely one of these islands uh, will basically um, say no to America and America will lose its influence throughout the first island chain and that includes Philippines as well and Philippines is already moving towards China um, so things are changing. Uh, so America is doing everything they can, and they feel that this is the last you throw of the dice. 
um, before they completely um, lose all influence in the region. So this is why America keeps getting involved. This is why they keep sending ships that sail through the Taiwanese Strait. Strait. And this is why they keep sending weapons to Taiwan. So Chinese are not very happy about it. And they made it very, very clear. And, you know, Biden also wants to meet President Xi as well. And the last time Biden met President Xi, President Xi called Biden a liar, you know, in front of his face. President Xi said something along the lines of, you know, you say these things in front of my face, you say things like we support the one China policy, but as soon as you go back to America, you basically, or your team uh, does completely something opposite. And this is one of those actions where Pelosi has basically been sent to Taiwan and um, and this, you know, that's what President Xi said to President Biden. He doesn't trust him. Um, and he said that to his face. So we'll see what happens with this one, really. Um, obviously, there's still a chance that Nancy Pelosi will cancel the trip. I'm not sure what's going to happen. Um, so we'll see what happens, really. So the final story of the day, the idiot of the day, is basically Ukraine's first lady... Um, she has asked Congress for more weapons. So basically, the beggar himself, um, Zelensky, he knows nobody is listening to him. He's going around the world begging for money, begging for weapons. And it's becoming tire tiresome and it's becoming very, very tired. He's becoming tired and people are now not listening to him anymore. So what does he do? He sends his wife to beg for him instead. So his wife is in Congress begging for money, begging for weapons. And I've seen a story circulating as well that she actually gave Biden COVID as well. I've seen this story circulating, so I'm not sure if it's true or not, but uh, it is uh, circulating out there. It, it is one of the reasons why Biden got uh, COVID. So um, I'm not sure how much truth in it in, is in that. But the point is, you know, the fact that Zelensky is sending his wife to do his dirty work, you know, sending his wife to do all of these begging for him, asking for more weapons. And it's absolutely shameful, shameful, completely shameful. So that's all I wanted to say today, guys. Um, thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Um, really appreciate the support you guys are giving me. You can join my Patreon or locals or you can buy me a coffee. Uh, it keeps me going. I really appreciate all the help. So I'll see you guys again soon. Take care for now.